7.50 here, Big 550 KTRS. Andrew Gavel is an antitrust expert at Howard University. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Let's talk Uber versus the Metro Taxi Cab Commission. Uber is saying that uh, they're being infringed upon and they have every right to go around not being regulated by the Taxi Cab Commission. What are your thoughts as you sit and watch this fight? Um, I don't think that's what Uber is saying. They're not saying that they shouldn't be regulated. I think what they're alleging in their lawsuit against the Taxi Commission is that the Taxi Commission has conspired with the taxi industry um, to refuse to adopt reasonable regulations to allow them to operate. Um, and that's a very different story, I think, that they would like the court to decide. The Taxi Cab Commission will tell them, hey, it's state law to be fingerprinted, so we can't, um, we can't negotiate that away. Well, if it were one thing like that, it might be, and it might sound reasonable, but I think uh, their allegation is that over a period of time, the commission has acted in a way that makes it clear that they don't really want to facilitate Uber's entry into St. Louis. St. Louis is the, one of the largest metropolitan areas in the United States that doesn't have any access to ride-sharing, um, they've certainly had a fair amount of time to consider regulations that might allow it to happen. So I don't think it's one thing like that. I think they've uh, thrown up a, a number of barriers to make it quite difficult for Uber to enter. And the commission itself is, uh, is uh, commanded in part by a number of people representing interests in the industry, in the taxi industry, and they are acting to protect that industry. At least that's what Uber is alleging in its lawsuit. Professor, it's not that uh, high of a bar to reach if you're asking drivers to be fingerprinted. I mean, how hard is it to fingerprint a driver? Well, it presumes something. I think we start with that. It presumes that there is some rationale, some reason why drivers ought to be fingerprinted. And the question is, what do they need that for? But as I said, if that was the only thing that the, uh, the taxi commission were asking, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. I think they've tried to impose a number of regulations and barriers to Uber entering over a period of time that make it clear that they're not as concerned about the public safety as they are about protecting um, uh, the current taxi industry from competition. What are the courts? And that's the problem. What are the courts? What do you think the courts say about things like this, or what are the courts saying? So I think that that's the right question. At the at the end of the day, here the court is going to have to decide whether or not the uh, the regulatory body, the taxi commission, and its individual commissioners and the taxi industry have been acting in accordance with federal antitrust law, or whether they've been using their authority improperly to impede the entry of Uber and and to serve the consumers of St. Louis. That's going to be the issue before the court. It, the the taxi cab commission forces the current taxi companies to have a background check and to get fingerprinted. So if they say that Uber doesn't have to get fingerprinted, then I'm assuming they're also saying that the taxi cab commission is, or, or the taxi cab companies are being infringed upon by having those bars set that high. Well, I do think it's very unlikely that the lawsuit would result in different kinds of standards. Um, but there are other issues in, in the case. For example, um, Uber does do its own background checks, um, and the question is whether the regulatory body should accept Uber's background checks um, uh, as adequate. Um, I don't think it's likely that the court's going to say there's one set of rules uh, on, on issues like background checks for taxis and, and one set of rules for Uber. But the question is whether they're really trying to impose higher costs on Uber to make it more difficult for it to enter and to make its drivers available to consumers in St. Louis. But regulatory bodies don't necessarily allow each individual business to have their own checking system, right? They don't tell the bars, well, you have your own checking system to make sure you're not serving people um, underage, right? They all, shouldn't they have the same uniform backgrounds checks? So I think, uh, again, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to say, sure, everyone should be treated similarly, but you've actually put your finger on what the problem is here. Industries are changing across the United States, and a lot of them are changing because of technology. Um, and the regulations that have been in place for decades in the taxi industry need to be flexible, and that's what other jurisdictions have been doing. They've been adapting and thinking about new means of, of facilitating businesses instead of sticking to, uh, to old ways of doing things. 
it's like having a square peg and 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 you've got a round hole and the square peg represents something new and different and instead of letting the hole adapt to that something new and different what they're trying to do is pound it into shape so that it looks like the old taxi industry so i think you've got the right issue the bigger question here is should the taxi commission adapt to change and facilitate rather than impede new methods of doing business how long for example you know this is a, a common feature of of uh, telephone-based apps is that you have some kind of mechanism for looking at reputation. The taxi drivers rate um, their customers and their customers rate drivers. So you get this immediate feedback information. So as a consumer, you know what the reputation of the driver is who's picking you up. That's an added feature that traditional regulation doesn't have. Howard, so that's different. Howard University professor Andrew Gavel with us for another moment or two. How long do you think it will be before the courts actually rule on this? Well, I think um, uh, both Uber and the Taxi Commission um, are going to try and get a relatively quick ruling, um, uh, but the underlying lawsuit could go on for quite some time. But, but hopefully there will be a prompt ruling on whether Uber can proceed with introducing its UberX service in St. Louis. Well, UberX has their UberX service going on right now, so they are in violation of the Taxi Cab Commission because they don't have approval to operate here. Well, what they've said is that the Taxi Commission is itself in violation of federal antitrust law. So I think those issues are going to have to be resolved relatively quickly by the court. When you say relatively quickly, <laughs> that's a relative term. Relative is relative. How long do you think? Well, I'm a law professor. That's why I chose the word <laughs> relative. I don't know. <laughs> Spoken like a true professor. Howard University professor Andrew Gavel, uh, antitrust expert. Thank you very much, professor. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. You got it. 757 here. Big 550 KT.